Are you ready for a story? <laughs> <laughs> so, can once upon a time, <laughs> there was this needy guy, really, a really needy guy. He had a problem and he wanted to get it fixed and he had a bag of money to pay for it, to get it fixed. Imagine that. On the other side, there was this kind of imaginary fairy tale delivery organization that could fulfill any wish for the bag of money, of course. So you can imagine that? You're, you're following me in the story? If you get lost, please wave your hands, then we can make sure you're there. So if this needy guy wants this fairy tale delivery organization to help him out with his needy problem, then they need to have a conversation. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. So they start blah, 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 blah. So in this conversation, there is some intention. So people have this ingrained behavior, at least in my fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. It's not for real, just to make sure. So they have this fairy tale. They have this needy thing. So this intention of my needy person, what do you think the intention in the conversation will be? What kind of intention would my needy guy have when they go in the conversation with our fairy tale delivery organization. Any ideas? Get what he pays for. That's the minimum. Uh, more money? Well, I don't know for sure. His needs or met. So when do we know he has needs or met? Yeah. Clear, clear requirements? I don't think my needy guy wants to give you clear requirements, don't worry. <laughs> it's a fairy tale, eh? it's not real. <laughs> so he wants the problem solved. He wants the problem solved. So this is what we all think, it's about money and problem solved. But in my fairy tale at least, this needy guy, the only thing he wants with the back of money is to squeeze out as much as he can from this fairy tale organization. <laughs> it's pretty much like who I am, by the way. So if my wife tells me, you can buy a new car, she gives me the budget. I don't go into the car configurators to try to figure out what's the cheapest solution. I want to max out the amount of features I get for the money my wife is giving me. <laughs> this is the same thing in my fairy tale here. We want to squeeze out as much as we can. So this is the intention here. What is the intention on my fairy tale organization? What do you think? Milk, the guy over there. So, okay, cool. This might, I, I know I have really, my fantasy is going all over the place now, but <laughs> you don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> so, anyhow. What else? The, especially the, the first thing. Do as little as we can. <laughs> this is my fairy tale organization here. They are like, yeah, you know, when they come to us with a problem, with all their needs and all their wishes and all their assumptions, we never get whatever done what they wish for anyhow. So even though we are a fairy tale organization, we cannot comply to the wishes of others. So we want to do as little as we can. So, and this is creating tension because there, this person, my needy guy, always wants more. Now my fairy tale organization always wants less. So this is creating some tension in my fairy tale now. A fairy tale without some tension would not be a fairy tale. Eh? Hold your horses, the happy ending is coming. So now you can get your fantasy on going. <laughs> so anyhow, so this tension is over there. So at a certain moment in time, they figure it out and they come to this agreement. They put it in this contract here. So you know this contract, we put scope in there, all the clarified requirements. So we have cost time and we've got a contract and we sign it off. So in my fairy tale, they figure out a good relation and they actually sign it. Imagine that. That's why it's a fairy tale and not for real, of course. So they sign it off. What do you think is the trigger for my fairy tale organization and my needy guy to stop having the conversation and say, you know what? Let's sign. What would it be? Which feature? I always want more. There I always want less. When do we stop? Compromise. When do we? What is the trigger to say, okay, I compromise. Good enough. Good deal. Good, value for this good deal. Good value. For whom? Time is pressing. Yeah, this is this is the real one, eh? 
this is really like you, you get a fairy tale. <laughs> so you have lots of imagination. I see this immediately. So what is happening here? They are going and going and the needy guy is like, yeah, you know, if I don't sign the contract, I will never get something. <laughs> That's the worst case scenario. It's not happening in my fairy tale. So in my fairy tale, there are all those fluffy things. We clarified, we have an agreement, oh, we understand each other. So it's all this, this nice, woohoo, fluffy thing. It feels good, doesn't it? So we sign this thing here, the time scope. Co so cost and that. Of course, we don't deliver on the deadline. My fairy tale, that's why it's a fairy tale. You always deliver, I know, but it's a fairy tale. So we don't deliver on our deadline. Why not? Because we worked for a year here on this thing. So really, a significant one year. We worked for one year. And now we give, the fairy tale organization gives the solution to my needy guy. The needy guy gets the solution. The first thing this needy guy is going to say is, it's not what I want. It's not what I want. See, you are a good storyteller. <laughs> 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 it's not what I wanted. So yeah, we get change requests in, we get defects in, we get all of this stuff. And then at a certain moment in time, we really get it done, 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 really done. So at a certain moment in time, we finish it. It's like everything is done. All change requests, all defects, everybody is okay now. It finally runs. So our, uh, our software product or whatever it is. So if we now think about this done, done, done state, really completely finished. And now you think backwards. I know it's difficult, but go with the flow. So in the story here, when it's done, 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 you think what happens the day before really getting to done, done, done? Most probably you just released your final defect fix. So what happened the day before that one? Another defect fix you, <laughs> you, you released. What happened the day before that one? And now continue, always going backwards. When do you think is the first moment this fantastic contract that we signed up at the beginning will be taken out of the seller. We roll it open. It's a fairy tale. Eh? It's, it's not in SharePoint or in Confluence or anything else. It's, we roll it open, the Rolex, and we really look at the contract. When do you think this will happen? She's very much into the requirements, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> so when there is something missing, there's some different opinions on what should be there and not be there. Yeah, and the needed guy says, this is not what I want, I want this and that and that. And then my fairy tale delivery organization, not for you of course, goes like, yeah, but this is exactly what you wanted. So, and then the needy guy goes, no, 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 this is not what I wanted. Uh, voila, and there we go, the Rolex goes open. <laughs> so, and we start pointing to those things. So, if we understand that this contract there, which we had fluffy feelings over, we get clarity and requirements, <laughs> we get a, a nice agreement. <laughs> so, we get all of this nice stuff. And now we understand, actually, when we really use this thing, in my fairy tale only, of course, so when we really use this thing is when we need to shift blame to the other party. So if I then would ask, what is the trigger to sign off this contract? Then we could say, you know, when we maximized our opportunity to shift blame to the other party. Hocus pocus, ping. <laughs> so when we maximize the opportunity to shift blame, that's the moment when we say, okay, sign. So uh, that's where we end up. Well, amazing thing. If we now think about, it's one year, eh? They go with the flow, with my story, it's a one-year thing, so something significant. It's not something you can do in two weeks. We need a significant amount of time to actually get the delivery done. If we now think about scope, think about yourself, think about maybe your past stories. You, you never know, you can also tell stories. Yeah, you can, uh, definitely. So what would be the percent change in requirements between the scope that we signed off on and the real done, 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 done state? How much is changed, how much is added, thrown away, whatever it is. What would be the percent change? 70%. 70%. You were going to help me, but you're not here, eh, my dear friend. <laughs> so I hear 70%. That's, that's per, uh, part one. One moment. 30. 80%. 80%. So this is the last one, the 100. 
100%. Voila, we are, uh, we are getting more, there. You have more space than I do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's why you need to write and I will be the board. <laughs> voila. So this is part one. We are going to make it a little bit more difficult in this story for you, you know? So we are going to look at cost and time together. You know, when we sign it off, we have an estimated cost and time. <laughs> By the time we get to don, 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 we have the actual cost and time. What's the percent difference, do you think? 200. <laughs> Who bids more? <laughs> you wanna no, uh, from the cost and time multiply the time. 400. It depends. Yeah. It depends on you, are you a consultant? You should become a consultant. This is really, it depends is the default answer. And then people start to think and then they come with an answer themselves and you say, this is great. And you collect the money. <laughs> Very, it's a great job. <laughs> At least in a fairy tale situation. <laughs> so we have enough metrics here. Um, I'm getting stuck. So we have one more to go. One more metric, one more things to evaluate in my story here. In this fairy tale organization delivery thing. So, if we have scope and cost and time, then generally what do we have? We get scope. You know, my needy guy doesn't go with the need that they have, they go with, build me the solution. And they think, you know, if you have this small piece, then this would be interesting, this would also be interesting. If we have all of this, then we have more data, then we can have AI modeled engineering that automatically populates this. And then if we do data mining and this kind of reporting, woo -hoo -hoo, I get like, woo, it's, a, it's almost like sex. So really, this is all what we want. We give this to this fairy tale organization. The fairy tale organization, from that scope, need to come off because I want to know how much will it cost and when will I get it. So we go from there to there. So to actually get to cost and time from the scope, we assume a certain kind of productivity in our organization. In my fairy tale organization, we assume there is a certain kind of productivity. We agree. You, you all agree? Yeah, I see lots of people nodding. Uh, cool, you still follow it. So my third question for you is, how many factors can you think of that could influence productivity over a one year time? The COVID is one, a flu epidemic might be two, your senior engineer leaving number three. So how many? What? So a flat eight, please. <laughs> uh, any other opinions? No other opinions? It's a story here, you can tell whatever you want. It's also what I, I also tell whatever I want here. Eh? It's a fairy tale. <laughs> there is an average number of five. Five. Okay, yeah, five. Flat eight, yeah. I made you a tie. Thank you. Voilà. So, no, yeah, you can add it, so whatever. So, go for it. Yeah, I, be I believe more in this flat eight than the five actually. So, you know, this is never ending. <laughs> five ends, it starts and ends, so that's not never, that's no so fun. So it's a fairy tale. We need a never ending story. <laughs> so anyhow, fairy tale. Um, so you see, in all those questions in my fairy tale, we never get three times zero. It's not there. We didn't get zeros, none of you. So if we then say, okay, this is group evidence, it's not even my evidence, it's not research based, it's just my fairy tale of course, I understand. But it's your evidence that this thing that I signed there, that this is an illusion. So all the numbers here on my body here, they are considered variation. Those are things that will happen. If you think like, let's try something out that we can ignore this variation and we will have this perfect story running around it's not going to happen. You have given the evidence, so we need to find some ways to absorb variation. So to, to make it happen. So in that context, if we understand it's an illusion, this contract is being given to our project management, in my fairy, only in my fairy tale organization, of course. So they give it to the project manager. This project manager in my fairy tale organization went to the PMI Institute. You know what PMI stands for? Uh, I don't know. You know that. Project Management Institute. If you now understand it's an illusion, then we could conclude it's a Project Magician Institute, <laughs> isn't it? Now, so 
if we understand, so in my fairy tale organization, my delivery organization here, they understand like, you know what, it's an illusion. We do know and we do accept it's an illusion. We are in a fairy tale anyhow and we are a fairy tale organization, so we can do some magic. So in, a, in an illusionist show, think about David Copperfield, a car trick, anything else you have seen on television or in a theater. You have been in these things, you can imagine something like that. Yeah, there are three key elements to make this kind of illusionist show like, wow, this was amazing. So three key elements. Element number one, to make this kind of show amazing, my fairy tale organization understands it's an illusion we have to deal with, so I will also use element number one, distraction. So I distract my person here, my needy guy, from the real work and the real trick. So this is already there. I make sure they don't look at this. It's a Gantt chart, but people that are using Kanban boards here, it's the same thing. Uh, anyhow. <coughs> so we have distraction. Next to distraction, we need to have a surprise effect. You know, if we can think about this is going to happen in my trick here, in my illusion, then it's going to be maybe a good show, but not a wow show. So we need to have distraction, uh, a surprise. So in the beginning, we get green, green, green. So my delivery organization goes, oh, everything OK. <laughs> uh, everything OK. Two months later, everything OK. Two months before that deadline, poof, red. <laughs> Imagine that. In my delivery organization, it's only my delivery organization. So in my fairy tale thing here, they still use this batch-based phase gate traditional waterfall process. That's why it's a fairy tale. Nobody is doing this anymore. So, but they really use this batch thing. So in their case, when they sent the contract, the contract went to the project manager. The project manager gives this to a business a group of business analysts. So in the business analysts, they start going more into depth. What does it all mean, all those scope and all those features? Get the requirements more clear. Uh, so they, they really do more of that work. If you are a business analyst in my fairy tale organization, you have always been blamed because you deliver something where the customer says, it's not what I wanted. So what do you do? You apply the CYA technology. You know the CYA technology? It's very popular in fairy tale worlds. You don't know? CYA, C stands for cover, the Y stands for your, and the A for ass. <laughs> cover your ass technology. <laughs> so, so they use this, so they, they, they go into this thing and they see a requirement and think, yeah, but the you know, this needy guy will also need this, and also that, and also this, and also that. So they add tremendous amount of more features requirements. Just fingers crossed that it's indeed what they really wanted. <laughs> so we cross our fingers. This costs a lot more time than my project manager initially estimated. But you know, they go to my fairy tale project manager, and they go like, you know what, I need more time for the requirements. My project manager is a very bright guy. It's, it's a fairy tale, he's a wizard, it's amazing what he can do. So he thinks like, you know, if the requirements are that well described, then creating test scenarios is like copy-paste. It's going to be peanuts, so we can shorten the testing time. If the requirements are that well described, for developers it's also going to be easier. Zip, also this one goes on. No worries, green. So then we throw it over the wall, it goes to the enterprise architects or other architects, you know, those ones that create PowerPoints but no code. Um, so, so this is in my fairy tale, of course, it's not happening in real life, I know. Uh, so it throws it over, the architects start working on this thing, they need to think about more things than they assumed they had to do. Why is that? Uh, my business analyst in my fairy tale delivery organization did a lot more features. So, and they also, even in my fairy tale delivery organization, they heard about everything needs to be a platform. So my architects is creating platforms all over the place. For all the requirements, they need more time. They go to my wizard project manager, and I said, I need more time. My wizard project manager, smart guy, really smart guy, he thinks like, hmm, if the features are that well described in the requirements, and the architecture is that well described in details, you know what? Then coding that piece, it's like two things in, one thing out. <laughs> That's going to be peanuts. So whoop, we scut the time down. So this is going to be very easy now. Hey, no worries, green light. So then it goes to the developers. And you think I've been a developer in my past, but not in my fairy tale organization, sorry. 
Oh. Uh, but uh, it goes in the fairy tale organization to the developer. And you think developers will stop adding more bullshit to it? No, they don't. They see this requirement, they see the architecture, they see, actually, it's a very simple if else. If something is there, true, then we do this. If not, we do something else. But as an engineer, what do we think? Yeah, and tomorrow they come with uh, another option and another option over there. So let's make it a case structure and a configuration. Hoppla. So we take a little bit more time, of course. And we are coding. Also, I'm a fair term, they are coding. My uh, wizard project manager goes to the coders and he says, like, he looks at watch and uh, time and says, ooh. He goes to the coders and he says, how is this feature development going? Who is coding? Not that many. Oh, this is disappointing. <laughs> so what's the default answer that you get from a coder? For the question. So how almost done. Voila. He's a coder. He's a coder. He really understands. <laughs> so in my fairy tale organization, he goes to the coders, to the developers, and they ask, how is the thing going? And they go, it's almost done. So yeah, what do I report to my needy guy? Green, everything okay. I cannot read code anyhow. I'm a wizard. But I cannot read this, this kind of magic. So yeah, uh, the only thing I do is trust whatever you tell me. So the day after, I go to the same coder. <laughs> and I was like, how is it going? It's almost done. Almost done. <laughs> oh, to my needy guy. Hey, green, reporting, Oop, all OK, you know. So at a certain moment in time, even as a wizard project manager, in my storytelling here, in my fairy tale, you get this like two months before, and you go to the same coder, you get nervous. It's like, shit, my illusion is going to fail. So you go to the same coder, how is it going? Almost done. Almost done. It's like, I don't fucking care anymore. You need to put it into testing. You need to all put it, all you all developers here, put it together. It needs to go into testing. No, no, really no, not tomorrow, now. Actually, it should have been there two weeks ago, but we shortened the time already. So at that moment in time, people start to try to merge their own feature branches, their own personal team branches. <laughs> they want to get rid and delete all their feature flags. And at that moment in time, everything explodes. <laughs> Boom. That's the moment when the red light is there. But this is a fairy tale. I know it's not happening in the real world. So, so two months before that. Uh, anyhow. <laughs> so two things. Distraction, surprise. The third thing we need is to make sure that the audience, my needy guy in this case, that they are okay for storytelling. I did the same thing. Eh? I started here with saying, I'm going to tell you a fairy tale. Meaning you accept that you will get the illusion of fairy tale being done. By entering this thing, by understanding that I will tell this, you're okay with this. So by your actions, behavior. So we also need to make sure that my needy guy is okay with the illusionist show that I'm going to bring. So what do we do? We say, here, we commit. The project manager at the beginning says to this guy, you know what, I got contract. We commit, never I commit, by the way. Remember, CYA. <laughs> <laughs> so we commit. At that moment in time, my needy guy understands, hoo hoo hoo, life is good. I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. <laughs> I don't need to be involved anymore. So this is my fairy tale thing of creating an illusion. It's amazing, eh? So we already discussed about the Project Management Institute. You think, yeah, you're bitching here and it's just a fairy tale. Actually, it's not, because in real life, they also say, here, we are miracle workers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you think it's a fairy tale. Hmm, I don't know for sure, but anyhow. So, we get into the situation two months before the deadline. Remember? We stepped there. So two months before the deadline, and that's where true magic kicks in. Really, we, we are talking about illusions now. I promised illusions and magic. So the illusion we have in my fairy tale. So now the real magic kicks in. Because for some reason, really, after we, this red light is there, everybody thinks we're going to fail tremendously. And then with real magic, we actually on the, exactly on the deadline, we deliver exactly all the scope, whatever is went. This is magic. Can only happen in a fairy tale, of course. So let's explore this true magic. Are you ready for it? <laughs> Are you ready for it? Yeah. Just talk a little bit, I will have a drink. <laughs> Long live Heineken. <laughs> I live in Belgium, that's something, you know, Heineken is the Netherlands. In Belgium, we have AB Inbev. <laughs> 
I don't know if I should say this, by the way, but anyhow. It's still good Heineken. Um, so true magic. How is it happening? You know, when this red light popped up, you have this executive, like, grand wizard in my imaginary fairy tale organization. And he goes to all the teams and he says, you know what? Whatever it takes, do whatever it takes to actually make it happen that we actually create the magic reality for needy guy. He even continues. He says, like, you know what? You have, if you stay over the weekend, I will give you pizzas. I got pizzas here before you came in. <laughs> so, and you get free beer <laughs> if you stay here all the time working. You know what? And if you met the deadline here exactly, really, with the scope, I will pay out a bonus to everybody. If we cannot make the deadline, we are most probably going to lose our magic money fairy tale sand. We are not going to be able to do magic anymore. Most probably, we need to let go, some of you. So yeah, we listen to that story of our thing, you know. And we think, yeah, you know, I don't want you actually to get fired. I really don't want you to get fired. So really, what do we have to do? I start hacking code together. I don't care about anything, so quickly all do things. You know, who doesn't like free pizza? <laughs> we make it happen, eh? free pizza, beers, hey, a bonus. Nobody gets fired. Woohoo! So because we start hacking, it means I don't spend time on clean code, clean architecture, automated tests, just quickly <laughs> do some stuff. So if we don't spend time on the clean code here, so this is an opposite connection, by the way, the, it turns around. Anyhow, if I don't spend time on uh, developing clean code, then, of course, the amount of clean code in my entire product that I'm going to deliver to my needy guy is going down. So this is what they call technical debt. This is the dark side. So this is going there because, yeah, you know, we need to, we need to have our pizza, don't we? So, so, of course, if we hack times and things together, then the amount of defects we might see popping up in our product goes up. Because we have not that much clean code in our thing, most probably over time or something will also influence this amount of defects, misery we have in our product. So it doesn't stop there, because if we have this, you know, this clean code, if it's really going down, 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 then at a certain moment in time, I think you can also know this, also in my fairy tale, over a certain moment in time, because of technical debt, we need always more time more effort to actually create a new feature in our existing product. We just don't know how fast it will happen. It will happen, we don't know when, how much effort, how much effect, but it will happen. So now we have all of this. So if the defects in our entire product, so every defect, we know there will be defects. So it's always going to be defects. We just don't know when they will pop up and how many. So it will drive variation on this original schedule, the timing, cost, whatever it is. Because of the duration that possibly kicked in and gets more effort and more time, but you don't know when it will happen, it will also drive variation. Because we have variation, my yeah, Grand Lord Wizard Executive is going to put even more pressure now. Oh, it's changing again, this cannot be true, you have to do this. So, okay, he bribes again, not with pizza this time, but with caviar and zalm. So really, oh, ho, 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 let's go for this one. It's better now. It's not beer anymore, it's champagne. <laughs> Way up, off we go again. So and we keep on going. So this is not really ha a happy ending. Eh? I promised a happy ending. You want a happy ending? Yeah? OK, let's go to the happy ending. So we turn around the plot. So at a certain moment in time, my fairy tale delivery organization, they start to realize we cannot do this. You know what, this kind of pressure, to be honest, if I look at my fairy tale, in my story only, of course, they think like they had this epiphany. And in my epiphany, they realized nobody can actually pressure me. It's my personal choice to either be pressured or not pressured. It's not because somebody else feels pressured that I need to be pressured. So they immediately say, pressure is out of the door. We stop being pressured. They limit the amount of yeah, bribes and threats, you know, who doesn't like free pizza? So they kept the free pizza, the rest they don't. So, so they, they stopped having the free pizza. It means that the time of hacking things together went down. They actually spent more time again on clean code because they focused on this one. They understood this is going to help us. 
So because this goes up, the clean code goes up, less technical depth, for example, because no hacking anymore, better clean code, we get less of those defects. Because of more clean code, actually, the duration and effort, it's becoming easier and easier to add new features. So all of this will make sure that the variance go down, we get more predictability, which means we get less pressure again, which we already ignore anyhow in the story, at least. Imagine that. It's crazy. So when they start doing this for a while, for a long time, for a couple of months, and at a certain moment in time, they get into a situation where over time, they really, they could throw away any kind of defect tracking issue system process that they had before. <laughs> no ETL anymore. Rip ETL. So there, there were none anymore. It's a zero defect environment suddenly. So here as well, the level of predictability of variance is almost zero. The variance. So we are getting like highly predictive. And now, oh, 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 wait a minute. How did you say? Highly predictive, and then those are the variation. Remember all my numbers here? Oh, your numbers, sorry. So we said you cannot ignore them. You cannot get rid of them. So this is a bit confusing, isn't it? So how did my fairy tale organization here deal with this? So they changed those things, but they still have to deal with variation. So they still need to absorb those numbers somehow. So they had another epiphany. Not only stopping having feeling pressure, they said, you know what? We're going to have one backlog, one product backlog. And we put all our teams behind this one backlog. And every two weeks, we deliver a highly integrated, ready to go into production product. So and because we have no uh, higher things and things like that, because every two weeks we deliver this thing, we actually drive confidence with our needy guy. Instead of the illusion of reports, now they get real working product. So a real working product is giving us more confidence or less confidence that we can actually do something or not do something. Saying, I did my ticket, if I would tell it to my wife, yeah, you know, I moved the ticket of cleaning the house to done. <laughs> For all the ladies in the room, would you believe me? <laughs> my wife goes like, <laughs> 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 voila. So anyhow, here with a real product, they get this done. Of course, if we put all the people in there, it means as well we put all the people to one significant impactful thing. It's not that every single individual in my team will start different things. Because if they all start different things, I would create chaos. It would not drive confidence. Because the, the needy guy would see something change there, something change there, something over there, something over there. And he would be like, what the fuck is happening? So we align all of them on one thing. And one thing only. If you put this kind of here, uh, let's say six teams, 10 people per team, 60 people for a two weeks iteration, that's 10 man days, 600 man days per sprint. If we say it costs around 500 euros for a day, this would mean 300k. We spent 300k every single sprint, we spent 600 man days in the sprint, then you can deliver something significant. If you cannot deliver something significant, you're doing something else tremendously wrong. So this is why we can absorb lots of the variation where my needy guy starts to feel confident. Every sprint I get like a tremendous amount of value on one aspect and then the sprint later maybe on another aspect. But I get lots of value. So in my fairy tale, we get slowly to the happy end. So, so this is part of it. So the thing is, with a larger capacity, we avoid the fallacy of the low numbers. And I will try to explain with this kind of image. If we think and we are going to predict something, imagine that, that's what we want to do. We want to predict the future, imagine that, every organization. They want to predict what the future will bring. Crazy. It's like a brain fart. You know a brain fart? You don't know a brain fart? It yeah. <laughs> doesn't compute. <laughs> that's a brain fart. Anyhow, so <laughs> if we have one server, you know, one server, you all understand the server? <laughs> yes, okay, cool. And we measure for one hour. What is the CPU load on my server? And now we measure for another one hour, what is the CPU load on my server? And another one hour for what is the CPU? And you get the tick here, eh? all one hours. And then we put all those one hour measurements next to each other, you will notice a huge variation. Or what is it the CPU load is there? So if we now say we don't do one server, we take eight servers. And instead of one hour, we measure for 24 hours. And another 24 hours. And another 24 hours. What is the load on all eight servers together? 
Then you will notice if we put those 24 hour measurements next to each other, there's a hell of a lot less variation. So it's more predictable. It means as well that we can absorb more of those numbers with a higher capacity. So using, instead of one team or one individual, so I, uh, this is not a fairy tale. I have seen real life organizations, imagine that, still working with man hours. So, and actually still many that use man days. I don't understand, it's crazy. But anyhow, here it's not even one team, we take eight teams. Because it's eight teams, we can absorb a lot of the numbers here. Lots of the variation we can just absorb without the need to change anything. So amazing, isn't it? So we continue. Instead of just doing this, they also make sure that every single two weeks they get really product delivered in the hands of the needy guy. So instead of this illusionist Gantt chart reporting or a Kanban board, whatever you want. So they really give software. So they really work together with my needy guy to clarify the needs, absorb feedback, change the direction. So we really truly collaborate. So and this is where we get to the happy end of my story. Because now we have a really happy client, the needy guy, and we have happy people in our delivery organization. Imagine that. Of course, this is a fairy tale. You don't need to believe me. Or is it real? It's a fairy tale. Oh. I'm a wizard. Okay, another question. How many, uh, how many percent of tech debt, uh, like what is the normal like, amount of tech debt? Uh, so let's, 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 let's go into those questions okay. once we are done. So the questions were like, where do you get the extra teams? We only have one team. What's the percentage of technical debt? It's a fairy tale. You can do whatever you want in a fairy tale. After we've done the fairy tale and we go back to real life, then I can maybe answer your questions. <laughs> so, but I'm still thinking too much in my fairy tale, which makes my context switch too big. So anyhow, let's listen to one example, which might actually get you into maybe it's not that much of a joke. Let's slowly go back to the real world. So this is uh, something... My name is Václav. Uh, my surname is Mukhna, as long as you can pronounce that. I am the CEO and co-founder of Ysoft, and I'm here today um, uh, because I wanted to share with you our journey uh, through less. Voila, less, you know less, large scale scrum. So that's his story that he wants to share. Let's listen why he wants to actually do something with less or banana or kiwi for that matter. Uh, the bigger we were, uh, the engine started to slow down for various reasons, but uh, from, from, from the CEO standpoint, it was just too slow. Voila, from a CEO standpoint, the grand wizard, everything was too slow. So we need to move on. Now he came back, 400% increase. The productivity skyrocketed. Um, you may, have, uh, Czech people may have read that 400% uh, increase in productivity. That 400 is real number. Imagine that. Not from day one, of course, but after a year, year and a half, 400% increase in productivity. And it was not done. Uh, our capability to deliver on that, uh, on that roadmap is 92% at this moment. So 92% from the roadmap, we deliver on time as we promised. Oh, the high predictability starts kicking in. Imagine that. And you think it's, no, it's done. He uh, bragged already enough, it's done. No, not the at all. The accountability, I would say teams are accountable. Uh, the mood in R&D, people say that they are, 80% of people will tell you that either they are satisfied or they are very satisfied with their job. Uh, absolutely perfect, right? So, oh, happy employees, happy grand wizard, what else do you want? Uh, we hired Jürgen to help us with the transition, uh, to tell us what to do. Uh, for us, in that process, it was important to, to pick a company who had, as an as a, as a advisor, to, uh, to, to have a company that is capable of delivering references that they helped companies like us or even bigger companies because we had a lot of ambition to grow. Well, ambition to grow. And they actually accomplished. When we started their journey, in the beginning they had six or seven teams. I forgot, it's January 2019. That's a long time ago already. So today, at this moment in time, they have 15 teams working on one backlog. 
So this is how they operate. So last year, when they published their financial information, which you need to do as a European company, we saw that they were close to 90% of EBITDA. And then you have two choices. 90% EBITDA is tremendous a lot. Eh? So they consider 20, 25, 30 is already very good. So 90% EBITDA is like crazy. So there's two signs for this. Either there's very bad management, so that could be one option, or they are saving up to do an acquisition. What did uh, Ysoft do this year? They acquired a company, a merger. So they are really growing into the market, not necessarily always in team members. So this is a, a nice thing, isn't it? So it makes you reflect on my fairy tale, doesn't it? To get there. So I will start ending up, then after the end I will be open for questions, but I prefer the question just in the bar with beers uh, come over and think, instead of this kind of strange setup where you're all sitting there with empty bottles. Uh, so uh, for me, I need to say thank you. So it's the time of the year, you know, Christmas. Uh, thank you to uh, Agile Lean Europe Krakow for, uh, for uh, organizing. I think you were the organizers. A lot of thanks to my friends at Procognita for bringing me over again. <laughs> so um, a, a last thank you will go to Heineken for hosting and all the beers and all the rest. Thank you very much. So for people that uh, look at the image, it's an AI generated picture, especially for here, it's the Heineken party. <laughs> so. <laughs>